Welcome everyone. To get started, I want to thank you all for taking time for watching my previous video on credit card fraud analysis. Today, I would like to share about LST model to improvise our model performance. When dealing with sequential data, recurrent neural network performed quite well, right? However, I read in several places that it may be also used for non-sequential data analysis. Let me remind you, our challenge was to classify credit card fraud for future events based on past study. Because fraud detection is a subclass of anomaly detection, classification is true, but I would not say this is accurate option. In this situation, we basically learn the entire distribution that takes place beneath the input data points rather than just zeros and ones. It is only after applying some threshold to the output probability in order to catch some unique events that is just changed to a classification problem. And it can also be used to either analyze suspicious activity or apply some supervised learning algorithm. Now for that, let's create a Python function and call it as credit card fraud detection. In this function, we are going to use long short-term memory. First, it will load the data set from a given file path, pre-process the data, building trains like LST model, evaluates the model performance, and then returns the train model. Let's go through the code step by step. So the data variable is created by reading a CSV file located at the data path. The dataset likely contains feature related to the credit card transactions and a binary class column indicating whether each transaction is fraudulent or not. Next, pre-process the data. The features are separated from the class column and stored in the feature variable. The class column is stored in the labels variable and a standard scalar is initialized and used to scale or normalize the features. Now, scaling is a common pre-processing step for machine learning to ensure that all the features have similar scales. Now is the time to split our data using train test split from our scikit-learn library. Let's build our LSTM model. So here, a sequential KRS model is created using a sequential class an LSTM layer with 64 units and a ReLU activation function is added to our model. The input shape is set based on our shape of training data. Next is a dense layer. It is a fully connected layer with a single unit and a sigmoid activation function. Now this layer outputs a probability value between zero and one, which can be interpreted as probability of fraud. Now, as we created our model, Let's compile it. The model is compiled with an Adam optimizer and binary cross entropy loss function, which is a common binary classification problem. Additionally, accuracy can be monitored as a metric, right? Now here we can initialize a list that store loss and accuracy value during the training process. The model is trained using the training data X train and Y train with a specified number of epochs and batch size. Now here for making prediction and evaluation, the train model is used to make prediction on the X test test data. The prediction are threshold at 0 0.5 to convert the probability values into binary prediction. Lastly, to evaluate the model, I printed a confusion matrix and a classification report. Now let's run the model. It might take some time. So here is the result and the loss curve and the accuracy curve.
Now, in this result, we couldn't see a much of a change in our true positive and the false negative compared to our last model. So I think we need to modify the code a little more. So this is the modified code. Here I have added a threshold parameter to our credit card function. You can also adjust the threshold to 0.7 instead of 0.5 to get more true negatives and fewer true positives. When the threshold is high, there is a chance that the model will predict the positive class more. Now be aware that increasing the threshold may also result more false negative, but that could be a case that we need to balance this model, right? So that is the reason of using uh, trade-offs between different types of errors. So here is the result we got after adding the threshold as 0 0.7. So from the confusion matrix, you can see true negative is like 56,855. Then I will just focus on the false positive here. That is nine. So genuine transactions incorrectly identified as fraud. That was our focus to reduce that number. And we definitely got it. But I would say there is still a room to improvise this model in terms of overfitting. I hope you found this video interesting. Make sure to try out the code and drop your questions or any issues in the comment section. See you in the next video. Take care.